Hello, welcome to Dit Dot. My name is Amanda. This video is a little bit different. I'm doing a little bit of a Christmas special. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope that I welcome you into my home and share a little tradition that we have found over the years. So as you can see behind me, and I'm gonna show you a little bit more detail, I have a stack of Christmas books. Several years ago when my kids were little, I think I started this when they were about four years old, the first year I just wrapped each Christmas book, I had 24 of them, in wrapping paper. Well, when I decided that this was gonna be a yearly thing, I quickly decided to make little bags. So I found all these Christmas scraps that somebody was donating, and I created these little bags. Each one is slightly different, and they open up, and I just can slide a book in at the end of the Christmas season, and they're ready to go for the next year. And it's kind of like a Christmas book advent calendar. And so every morning we open up a Christmas book. And when the girls were little, we always would read the book. Now that they're almost 14, we read our favorite ones. And then the other ones we just like, okay, yay, remember this book, you know. But here, let me bring you in and show you some of our books. So of course we have some of the classics like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman, which we read every single year. This book, Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree, by Robert Berry is a very good story. And you know, we have the Elf on the Shelf book. And this one's a really cute story too. A Wish to be a Christmas Tree. So, you know, today is December 12th. So we are about halfway through. So we still have a bunch of books wrapped up in bags. One of our absolute favorite Christmas books to read every year, my mom gave the girls a couple years ago. It's Christmas Delicious by Lynn Lotz and illustrations are by Mark Jones. Now I'm not gonna read it to you, I don't wanna infringe on copyright, but I would encourage you to check this book out. It is, the illustrations are absolutely stunning. It's about these two little mice named Raisin and Rice, and they have a Christmas wish to create a feast for all of their friends. The illustrations are stunning. Like this Christmas tree just is glowing off the page. They live at Zanzibar's Deli. One thing that I love about this book is that it's very rhyming and so it's real fun to read out loud. And it's just a really sweet story about sharing the Christmas spirit and, you know, creating a, <laughs> a delectable meal for all their friends to come and visit. At the end of the book, I'll read the last, the last page. I'll give the spoiler alert. Raisin and Rice were two sleepy mice. We're, sh we're sure they would never forget. The guests, the food, the warm holiday mood. This was their best Christmas yet. Now you can tell why their plan turned out well. The mice showed their friends that they cared. They both learned anew what has always been true. Christmas is best when it's shared. So I just love the little message in the story. It's very sweet. But at the very end of the book is a recipe. But it's a recipe for Rice Krispie Treats that has raisins and uh, chocolate chips in it. And I love a good Rice Krispie Treat, but the combination of raisins and chocolate chips in a Rice Krispie Treat just doesn't sound very good. And every year when I read this book, I think they should be making rice pudding. Like, and so this year I'm inspired with my YouTube channel to actually make rice pudding. So we're gonna head over to the kitchen and attempt to make a raisin and rice pudding inspired by this really, really sweet book. And I'll look this book up on Amazon and I will link it in my description box below. All right, let's head over to the kitchen. So I really hope this is good because it takes five cups of milk. So, but only one half cup of rice. So it says, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with five cups of milk. That was four, so I'm gonna add another cup. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my burner. And then we're gonna add one third cup of sugar. Ooh, I didn't catch it. 
<laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting the sugar dissolved into the milk. And then we're going to go ahead and add in half a cup of our barrio rice. You can use other rices too, but from what I was reading, basically I looked at a whole bunch of different recipes, just like I normally do, and then I kind of do my own thing. So we'll see how this works out, because that's just how I roll. So a lot of recipes say to use a medium grain rice. A lot of recipes say that they prefer our barrio rice. So that's what I had, so we're gonna try that. And basically, we just have to stir and stir until it starts to thicken up. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir and watch this for a little bit. It doesn't look like much yet. We're still just stirring and making sure the rice doesn't split. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and I have a few observations to add. One, this is a very budget-friendly meal, or not meal, but dessert. The ingredients are pretty cheap, but it is definitely a labor of love <laughs> sitting here stirring this for so long and i have been playing with the temperature i've been raising it and lowering it like i lowered it down to make a mug of tea because i'm like oh it is starting to thick up so i can see the rice grains are starting to pump up i have raised up the temperature while i'm standing here stirring it i am wishing i had a longer whisk uh, this is a whisk that's supposed to have the hollow handle, which is supposed to dissipate the heat, but holy cow, no, it is hot. It's very hot. So I'm holding the very, very tip of it, stirring it is, but I can feel it getting nice and thick. So we'll be on to the next step, probably within the next five minutes, but oh, I think this is going to be really, really tasty. Okay, now you can really start to see, hopefully on the camera too, how it is thickening up. The rice is now coming up to the surface. You can actually feel that it is getting to be a nice creamy consistency. Oh, and my handle got way too hot. I had to get out of the oven mitt. So one thing I forgot to add earlier on, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick, was about a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna go a little shy because I don't have unsalted butter that we're gonna add at the end. My butter is salted, so I'm just gonna put a little less salt here at this step. Stir that in. Starting to get nice and creamy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on low, and we're gonna do the next step. The rice is now, you can see it come to the top. And, ooh, hot, hot, hot. Okay, so now I have a whole nother cup of milk right here, and I'm gonna crack in an egg. I'm going to whisk up my egg with my whisk that I let cool down for just a minute. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is something called temper the egg. Because if we if we pour this into that hot liquid, it would scramble our egg. We don't want that. So I'm going to take a little, little bit of this hot, hot porridge, rice pudding. And while I'm whisking, I'm going to drip it down in slowly. Do that again. This is called tempering our egg. So we're bringing our egg up to a closer temperature to what is in this pot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off for a minute because it's starting to stick on the bottom. I can feel it. We don't want it to stick after all that hard work we did. So now this egg temperature is going to be pretty warm. And again, slowly, we're gonna go the opposite direction. But again, you wanna do it slow, otherwise we would, we'll scramble that egg. This is looking good. Honestly, the rice saves you though. If it does scramble a little bit, the texture of the rice would hide it. But in like other kinds of puddings or um, like sometimes pie custards and stuff like that, if the recipe calls for you to temper your egg, you want to be very careful because you don't want that scrambled texture in there. Okay, now I'm going to add in a couple pats of butter. Maybe a little bit more. It is a dessert. A splash of vanilla. Throw this in. Get out some cinnamon. 
Oh man, it's just came together so nicely right there at the end. Okay, where's my cinnamon? Oh, right here. Some of these cranberries. My kids love these dried cranberries. And I'm gonna zest in some orange. Now, nutmeg would be really good in here. I'm not a big fan of nutmeg, but if you are, then I would add it to this dish to continue on with our Christmas theme. So this is my micro planner that I have talked about many times on my channel because I love it for grating garlic, for zesting, because look, it just gets just the zest off. And see right there, we'll put that down into the dish in a minute. Oh, uh, it smells delicious. Okay, right, now I'm getting excited for a little bit there. I'm like, okay, this is taking way too long, but the payoff is going to be worth it. Okay, let me show you. Look at that, gorgeous. It's nice and creamy. Get that butter melted in all the way. All right, I'll plate up a bowl and we'll give it a final, or not a final, I haven't even tasted it yet. So we'll give it a taste and see what I think. All right. Got a little dessert bowl here, and let's give it a try. I seriously, I'm not even sure if I've ever had rice pudding. I probably have somewhere. Mmm. Mmm. I love the hint of orange. It's not very sweet. We didn't put that much sugar in that whole big pot. Um, it's very, very, very creamy. If you like creamy desserts, mmm. The tartness there of the cranberry. Mm. and the vanilla mm. this is a winner i'm really excited about this this is delicious mm -hmm. i'm totally gonna sit here and enjoy this and call the kids down to see if they want to try it i hope you enjoyed this fun video it was a little bit different uh, make sure that you hit the subscribe button to watch other videos on my channel and i will see you next time merry christmas y'all